devastated and completely confused by these practices. We were sure that it was God's effort to use drugs to reach higher consciousness. Many of us found ourselves in very strange states as a result of these practices. We never suspected the damaging effects of our addiction as the root of our difficulty and pursuit to the end would ever have offered hope. In quiet moments of meditation, God's will can become evident to us. Quieting the mind through meditation brings an inner peace that brings us into contact with the God within us. A basic premise of meditation is that it is difficult, if not impossible, to obtain conscious contact unless our mind is still. The usual, never-ending succession of thoughts has to speak for progress to be made. So our preliminary practice of changes filling the mind, and letting the thoughts that arise die a natural death. Our thoughts behind is the meditation part of the 11th step becomes a reality for us. 38 Narcotics Anonymous Emotional balance is one of the first results of meditation, and our experience bears this out. Some of us came into a program broken, and hung around for a while, only to find God or salvation in one kind of religious cult or another. It is easy to float back out the door on a cloud of religious view and forget that we are addicts with an incurable disease. It is said that for meditation to be of value, the results must show in our daily lives. This fact is implicit in the 11th step, which is will for us and the power to carry it out. For those of us who do not pray, meditation is our only way of working this step. We find ourselves praying, because it brings us peace and restores our confidence and courage. It helps us to live a life that is free of fear and distrust. When we remove our selfish motives and pray for guidance, we find feelings of peace and serenity. We begin to experience an awareness and an empathy with other people that was not possible before working this step. As we seek our personal contact with God, we begin to open up as a flower in the sun. We begin to see that God's love has been present all the time, just waiting for us to accept it. We do the footwork and accept what's being given to us freely on a daily basis. We find relying on God becomes more comfortable for us. When we first come to the program, we usually ask for a lot of things that seem to be important on the need. As we grow spiritually and find a power greater than ourselves, we begin to realize that as long as our spiritual needs are met, our living problems are reduced to a point of comfort. When we forget where our real strength lies, we quickly become subject to the same patterns of thinking and action that got us to the program in the first place. We eventually redefine our beliefs and understanding to the point where we see that our greatest need is for knowledge of God and for us and the strength to carry that out. We are able to set aside some of our personal preference, because we learn that God will for us consist of the very things we most value. God will for us becomes our own tool for ourselves. This happens in an intuitive manner that cannot be adequately explained in words. We become willing to let other people be who they are without having to pass judgment on them. The urgency to take care of things isn't there anymore. We couldn't comprehend acceptance in the beginning, today we can. We know that whatever the day brings, God has given us everything we need for our spiritual well-being. It is all right for us to admit powerlessness.
with the wreckage of our cat. The last thing we expected was an awakening of the spirit. We just wanted to stop burning. The steps lead to an awakening of the spiritual nature. This awakening is evidenced by changes in our lives. These changes make us better able to use my spiritual principles and to carry our message of recovery and hope. Narcotics Anonymous. To the addict who still suffers. The message, however, is meaningless unless we live it. As we live it, our lives and actions give it more meaning than our words and literature ever could. The idea of spiritual awakening takes many different forms in the different personalities that we find in the fellowship. However, Thank you.
our daily lives leads us to a new image of ourselves. Honesty, humility and open-mindedness help us to treat our associates fairly. Our decisions become tempered with tolerance. We learn to respect ourselves. Developing the concept of God as we understand Him is a project that we can 
optimize our lives and change our old attitude. When we admit that our lives have become unmanageable, we don't have to argue our point of view. We have to accept ourselves as we are. We no longer have to be right all the time. When we give ourselves this freedom, we can allow others to be wrong. Freedom to change seems to come after acceptance of ourselves. Sharing with fellow addicts is a basic tool in our program. This help can only come from another addict. This help is said, I have had something like that happen to me, 
God is there.
that we guard our autonomy so carefully. We must see that we, in our group, can do whatever we decide, regardless of what anyone says. This is hardly true. Each group has that complete freedom, except when their actions affect other groups or NA as a whole. Like group conscience, autonomy can be a two-edged sword. Group autonomy has been used to justify violation of the tradition. It's a 54 narcotics anonymous. Contradiction exists. We have slipped away from our principles. If we check to make sure that our actions are clearly within the bounds of our tradition, if we do not dictate to other groups or force anything upon them, and if we consider the consequences of our actions ahead of time, then all will be well. Tradition 5 Each group has the one primary purpose, to carry the message to the addict who still suffers. We need to say that our primary purpose is to carry the message. that we must do to preserve and protect our primary 
but never do it in court. To endorse is to sanction, approve or recommend. Endorsements can be either direct or applied. We see direct endorsements every day in television commercials. An implied endorsement is one that is not specifically stated. Many other organizations wish to ride on the NA name. To allow them to do so would be an implied endorsement and a violation of this tradition. Hospitals, drug recovery houses, probation and parole offices are some of the facilities we deal with in carrying the NA message. While these organizations are sincere and we hold NA meetings in their establishment, we cannot endorse, finance or allow them to use the NA name to further their growth. However, we are willing to carry the NA principles into these institutions. The addicts can still suffer so that they can make the choice. The next thing we ought never do is finance. This is more obvious. Finance means to supply funds or to help support financially. The third thing warned against in this tradition is lending the NA name to fulfill the purposes of other programs. For example, several times other programs have tried to use Narcotics Anonymous as part of their services offered to help justify funding. 56 Narcotics Anonymous Further the tradition tells us that a relieving facility is any place involving NA members. It might be a halfway house, a detox center, a counseling center, or a clubhouse. People are easily confused by what is NA and what are the related facilities. Recovery houses that have been started or staffed by NA members have to take care that the differentiation is clear. Perhaps the most confusion exists when it involves a clubhouse. Newcomers and older members often identify the clubhouse with Narcotics Anonymous. We should make a special effort to let these people know that these facilities and NA are not the same. Outside enterprise of any agency, business venture, religion, society, organization, related activity, or any other fellowship. Most of these are easy to identify, except for the other fellowships. Narcotics Anonymous is a separate and distinct fellowship in its own right. Our problem is addiction. The other 12-step fellowships specialize in other problems, and our relationship with them is one of cooperation, not affiliation. The use of literature, speakers, and announcements from other fellowships in our meetings constitutes an implied endorsement of an outside enterprise. The sixth tradition goes on to warn us what may happen. Less problems of money, property or prestige divert us from our primary purpose. These problems often become obsessions and shut us off from our spiritual aim. For the individual, this type of abuse can be devastating. For the group, it can be disastrous. When we, as a group, waver from our primary purpose, addicts who might have found recovery die. Tradition 7. Every NA group ought to be fully self-supporting, declining outside contact.
kind enough to support ourselves and our habits. We were, still, con, begged and sold ourselves. There was never enough money to fill the emptiness inside. In our recovery, money is often still a problem. We need money to run our group. these expenses and whatever is left goes to support our services and to further our primary purpose. Unfortunately, there is little left once the truth pays its way. Sometimes members who can afford it give a little extra to help. Sometimes a committee is formed to put on an activity to raise funds. These efforts help and without them, we could not have come this far. NA services remain in need of money, and even though it is sometimes frustrating, we really would not have it any other way, we know the price would be too high. We all have to pull together, and in pulling together we learn that we really are part of something greater than ourselves. Our policy concerning money is clearly stated, we decline any outside contribution. Our fellowship is completely self-supporting. We accept no funding, endowments, loans, and or gifts. Everything that is price, regardless of intent. Whether the price is money, promises, concessions, special recognition, endorsements, or favors, is too high for us. Even if those who sell can guarantee no strength, we still would not accept their aid. We cannot afford to let our members contribute more than their fair share. We have found that the price paid by our group is community and controversy. We will not put our freedom on the line. Tradition aid. Narcotics Anonymous should remain forever non-professional, but our service centers may employ special workers. The age tradition is vital to the stability of NA as a whole. In order to understand this tradition we need to define non-professional service centers and special workers. With an understanding of these terms, this important tradition is self-explanatory. In this tradition we say that we have no professional. By this, we mean we have no staff psychiatrists, doctors, lawyers, or counselors. Our program, 58 Narcotics Anonymous, works by one addict helping another. If we employ professionals in NA groups, we would destroy our unity. We are simply addicts of equal status freely helping one another. We recognize and admire the professionals. Many of our members are professionals in their own right, but there is no room for professionalism in NA. A service center is defined as a place where NA service committees operate. The World Service Office are local, regional, and area offices are examples of service centers. A clubhouse or halfway house, or similar facility, is not an NA service center and is not affiliated with NA. A service center is, very simply, a place where NA services are offered on a continuing basis. The tradition states, service centers may employ special workers. This statement means that service centers may employ workers for special skills such as phone answering, clerical work, or printing. Such employees are directly responsible to a service committee. As NA grows, the demand for these workers will grow. Special workers are necessary to ensure efficiency in an ever-expanding fellowship. The difference between professionals and special workers should be defined for clarity. 
N.A. As such, ought never be organized, but we may create certain boards or committees directly responsible to those they serve. This tradition defines the way that our fellow will function. We must first understand what N.A. is. Narcotics Anonymous is adding the desire to stop using and to join together to do so. Our meetings are a gathering of members for the purpose of staying clean and carrying the message of recovery. Our steps and traditions are set down in a specific order. They are numbered, they are not random and unstructured. They are the 12 traditions of Narcotics Anonymous 59. Organized, but this is not the type of organization referred to in the ninth tradition. In this tradition, organized means having management and control. On this basis, the meaning of tradition 9 is clear. Without this tradition, our fellowship will be in opposition to spiritual principles. A loving God, as he may express himself in our group conscience, is our ultimate authority. The ninth tradition goes on to define the nature